first question I wanted to ask you, uh, Lieutenant Governor, is one for my colleague who's working on a story about mental health. So here locally, uh, Pine Rest Christian Mental Health Services is saying the demand for their services has risen so much that they've experienced an 151% rise in children and adolescents that they've had to turn away from 2020 to 2021. So do you think that the funding coming for new mental health staffers in schools will reduce that number? And what else is being done at the state level to help crisis centers like Pine Rest meet this massive demand uh, for children mental health services? So since taking office, Governor Whitmer and I have been very clear that we have not been comfortable with how our mental health support and services infrastructure had frankly been gutted over the last 30 years in the state of Michigan. And that's something that we care very deeply about investing in and to be more responsive to the fact that especially over the last two years, really there's been a generation now of Michiganders who've been underserved by this system. And that's why in part, as part of a proposal that we put forward of using American Rescue Plan dollars to make a $1.4 billion investment in our public health infrastructure, a lot of that included deeply and directly investing in mental health support services and to show you again how we prioritize this especially during the pandemic and the first emergency uh, de disaster declaration requests to the federal government that our administration made we asked for crisis support counselors um, for people especially for young people i mean look as a parent i, I have twin third graders and this, they've been really stressed out. You know, they're, they're hearing, I don't know from their parents and, and, and they are, you know, seeing all these, these really challenging things on television and people not knowing what's happening. And it's, it's, it's scary. And then especially for people who've had episodes, um, we certainly don't want those people to be confronted by, merely, by solely a criminal justice system. We want them to be supported by support infrastructure. And so we wanna make sure that institutions like um, the one you described um, have the resources. And so we're hoping that the state legislature will join us in fully funding and resourcing institutions like that. And touching on um, the anniversary of the January 6th insurrection now, you know, what do you remember from that day last year? And what message would you like to send to Michi Michiganders now a year later, especially with the uh, House Select Committee still investigating and doing their thing when it comes to this event? January 6th was a horrible day in American history. There's no other way to describe it. It was, um, it, it was a horrible thing to witness. Uh, you know, certainly um, we hope that going forward, every person, let alone every public official, will actively reject not only the, the acts of violence that we saw or any act of violence, let alone political violence, but they also reject the, the, the ideology that led to what happened, which was this, this whole big lie that the last election was, was stolen, which it was not. And, and I hope that going forward, we can recognize that the job that we have as public officials is to make sure that we are creating conditions for people to be successful, not for them to be um, motivated to the point of committing violence against our country and against our democracy. And, you know, we get dozens and dozens of messages throughout the last couple of weeks and months of people from uh, all over West Michigan about the UIA and them getting letters that they owe them back money and they're, they're worrying, they're stressing about it. So, you know, what's being done at the state level to help people get those debts waived if they don't owe them back? And what advice do you have for families who are trying to work through these issues? First and foremost, I know this has been hard. I mean, our unemployment insurance system and the professionals working it have been stretched in ways that are unima unimaginable. We've never seen the scale of the need. We also have never seen the scale of people who have uh, purposefully and intentionally uh, lied and committed fraud against that system. And why that really angers me is because it makes it more difficult for families like the ones who you're describing who need these resources, have legitimate claims to these resources, it makes it more difficult for them to get what is actually theirs. And it makes the system more complicated where the other mistakes could be made that, that hurt their experience as opposed to um, um, something else. And so the governor and I, we, we care really deeply about this and we wanna see this fixed. That's why we you know, flexed more and more resources to UIA. We set up a task force to respond to the you know, unprecedented fraud that we saw all around the country, but that was targeted particularly in the state of Michigan. And we've been rated 99.5% effective in dealing with that fraud. And so we just want folks to continue to know that we are working hard every day and the professionals um, in that agency are working hard every day to make sure that we get it right and we get them the resources that they need. This is about being able to put food on your table for your family. And that's all Governor Whitmer and I want to enable. You know, when we get these messages, a lot of people say, do I need a lawyer? Do I need, you know, this or that? And I wanted to hear your thoughts there on what some of those next steps 
can be for those families who do have those legitimate claims. You know, I don't know what the, I can't speak to any sort of individual or specific case, I'm not aware of precisely what you're describing. But what I will say is again, the, the agency and the agency leadership, which is now under new leadership, um, is hoping to resolve these issues quickly, hoping that resolve these issues correctly and accurately. And, and, and that's the and that's the process we hope people will, will continue to, to be responsive when the agency does reach out. And that sometimes, you know, mistakes may happen and we wanna get them clarified and corrected. And the last thing I wanted to touch on is COVID. So, you know, right here in the new year, we keep setting records in terms of cases and deaths were up in 2021 in Michigan. So, you know, what is the state plan to try and get more people vaccinated so that way we can try and return to a more normal 2022? You know, absolutely. We want to continue to encourage people to make the choice to get vaccinated. Every vaccine is a victory against COVID-19. Um, people who are vaccinated need to get boosted to have better protection against uh, the current Omicron variant or, or emerging variants. And the truth is, you know, getting vaccinated is what stands um, between us and our goal to have a 2022 that has experiences that we recognize from before. And so we are certainly continuing to increase the, the uh, resources that we're putting in from a communication standpoint and working with community partnerships and trusted members of the community to let folks know that this is the choice they need to make. Because you know what is really concerning is that when you look at our hospitals, 85% of the people who are in the hospital with COVID aren't vaccinated. 85% of the people who are in the ICU with COVID are not vaccinated. 85% of the people who are dying from COVID-19 are not vaccinated. It is clear what we need to do to prevent these horrible outcomes from COVID-19 and therefore to stabilize not only our healthcare system and its capacity, but also stabilize the operation of our businesses, the in-person learning experiences of our children. This is what we need to do. People need to get vaccinated. And so we're hoping people will continue to make that choice every day. And uh, I guess one last thing on COVID, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Governor Whitmer was here and uh, when people asked her about, you know, if there would be more restrictions or mask mandate, vaccine mandate, she mentioned that we have more tools in our toolbox to deal with COVID. So that's kind of what's keeping that from happening. I wanted to see your thoughts on that. That's absolutely correct. You know, when we were in a reality where we were learning more and more about the virus every single day, and we didn't have safe, effective vaccines. Now we have three and they work. The, the stats I just described, you know, more than 80% of people dying in the hospital or on a ventilator are people who are not vaccinated. Vaccines are effective in preventing people from having those severe outcomes. And so we wanna make sure people take advantage of the resources that we have. The vaccines are free, they're safe, they're available, they're convenient. And then that's what folks need to do, get vaccinated, get boosted, uh, get your kids boosted. My twin eight-year-olds are, are all fully vaccinated. The FDA, uh, or the, the FDA just recently approved um, uh, boosters for, for teenagers and folks should, should do that as well. And I think that's all the time that we have. I appreciate you joining me. I'll go ahead and stop the recording here.